Hey, this is Rene, and in this video, we will finish our Bowling Alliance Expert Advisor for the Media Trailer 5. So in this video, I um, already announced in the in the last part, we will add a um, moving average trader. And I think it is always a good idea to um, uh, let the user decide if he wants to use or not use this moving average filter. So you can have a switch for this by um, uh, using a Boolean variable. A Boolean variable can all only be true or false. So you have in your inputs a really cool switch and you can decide if you want to or do not want to use uh, some function. So for a moving average, we of course have to declare a new handle. So, and if we, if we look at this, we can already see if we um, call the IMA function what we need. First of all, again, we have to provide the, th the symbol, then we have to provide a time frame. And I would suggest <clears throat> that you create a new variable for this because sometimes you do not want to have the moving average calculated on the same time frame as the Bollinger Bands indicator. So we can just create a new time frame variable as a input variable by using a different name. Then we have the periods, which should be, of course, again, be a uh, input variable here, and we can say ma periods. Then we have a shift value. I choose zero, as I do most of the time. Then we have the ma method, which is um, yeah, mode sma or mode ema for exponential moving averages. And there are several methods. And we can use a input variable for this. And then we have the applied price. So we again create a variable for this. So we can say input enum applied price ma applied price like this. Price close, for example. And now everything is pretty much the same as with the Bollinger Bands indicator. We use the copy buffer function to receive our moving average values. So we say copy buffer. We say handle MA, it is, uh, the buffer number is zero, or you can also say baseline because there is only one line for this um, moving average indicator. Now we have a starting position, which might be one, and a count, which is one in this case because we only need one value. And we store this in the moving average array. Make sure that you do not forget these uh, squared brackets here because otherwise it would not work. So what we can do now is before we open a position, we now want to check if um, the filter criteria is, um, is, is, is fulfilled. So we can check before we open a um, sale position, we want to check if the uh, current price Oh, what we want to do is we want to check if the bid price is below the moving average at index zero. And even if uh, only if this is true, then we want to open a position. And we also have to check if the moving average filter is turned off. So we can say if is a uh, is MA filter is equal to false or the bid price is below the moving average price at index zero. Uh, so what one of these conditions has to be true to enter the body of this if statement and to open a position. If one of these is false, um, or if, if both of these are false, then we do not enter the body. And this makes sense. And you can write it like this, or you can just put this exclamation mark in front of the isMA filter, which would be the exact same expression. And let me just copy this down here, and we can say if, um, yeah, if the ask price is above the moving average, or if the moving average filter is turned off, then we want to enter a position. And to make everything um, easy to 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 read in the chart, you can also, of course, print this moving average value in the chart like this. So now if we make another test here and we turn the moving average filter on, we should not see as much trades as we saw, as we saw before because we will now only enter buy trades above the moving average filter and sell trades below the moving average filter. So in this case, let's wait for a trade. This filters out a lot of trades as I just saw, but there is a trade now, which is a buy trade. And 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there are far less trades than before, but um, as you remember, we can define the period. So, for example, we can say we want to calculate the moving average on the four hour <clears throat> time frame and we make the position decision on the H1 time frame. So, in this case, as you can see here, we have another chart now and there is um, the moving average now. And um, yeah, now we get a lot more trades. And yeah, we, we um, let's see if we get some more trades, if there are any signals. Yeah, I think, I mean, it should work. You can make some more tests on your own PC, of course, if you copied all the code. And then you can yeah just check out different settings, different uh, inputs for your program and yeah, try to make some tests and check with which settings performs uh, the best for you. And if you are um, maybe a little bit advanced or if you saw the other tutorials, you can of course take all this and, um, <clears throat> uh, and, 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 and add some more code to it. I mean, there are always adjustments. As, as um, I can add some, some more adjustments. For example, you can say, how much of your position you want to close. For example, you can say input double um, uh, close percent. You can say, for example, you want to close only 30% of your position. So you can exchange this calculation with um, a close percent divided by 100. Um, these are the lots to close now. And um, if I compile this, and run the program again, you should see that we do not close 50% uh, of our positions now, but only 30% uh, if there's a, a partial close, as you can see here. And this is working just fine. So there are always adjustments that make your program a little bit smoother, a little bit better to handle for the user. For example, you can make, you can make so much more stuff. You can say, for example, the SA distance shall have a factor and the TP distance shall have a, a factor like this. You can say um, SL factor, TP factor, factor like this. And I just have to create some more inputs for this, like uh, SL factor. This might be two and TP factor might be um, 0 0.5, for example. So if I change it um, like this, you will see this will automatically have a great impact on the on the system and also on the performance. So there's a lot to adjust and a lot to test. So now we should have a, um, a, a SL, which is far away from the entry, and the TP is closer to the entry, like we see here. So there's a lot of easy adjustments that make the program... Um, yeah, better or uh, more flexible. So just play around with this and you can also turn the filter on and off. Yeah, just make your own testing. Hope you liked this tutorial. Let me, let me know in the comments what you think about this. I know that some people already requested partial close mechanisms. So I just wanted to show how you can implement this. And if you like this tutorial, please make sure that you click the like button for every of the videos and make sure to leave a comment because it really helps with the algorithm and um, it, it helps YouTube to um, classify this content as um, good content for more people to watch. So thank you and have fun with this program and with, with your further testing and trading. Have a, great tra have a great time. We will see each other in the next video. Bye-bye.